What's going on everyone and welcome. We are at Hay Days in New Branch, Minnesota. I've never been here. You ever been here, Trey? I have not. Um, what the heck are we at? Right now we're watching a dirt track with an ATV that's got, a, I think, a Hellcat engine in it right now. So, absolute love for it. It's, uh, it's a lot of cool stuff. Yeah, it's um, a little out of our element, yeah. but there's a lot of um, overlaying um, passions and outdoor love, you know. Um, quite a few fishermen and hunters out here, for yeah, sure. Heck of a season this year, and um, now we're winding down a little bit, right? Yes, sir. Uh, enjoying yourself at a big engine ATV snowmobiling festival. I know right now, we got a burnout going on over here. Like I mean, biggest cloud of smoke I think I've ever seen. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. So it's, I mean, it's amazing coming here. I mean, all the snowmobiling guys, I got to meet quite a few of them, all the FXR guys. Um, great guys. It's, it's pretty cool to listen to how, what they do and what they do to train for it. You know, it's kind of like us and fishing. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, Trey, what's I, going on? I, I wish I mean, you guys The EPA, see the EPA, if they were here, would be rolling. It, it uh, would looking be. at what's going on here. It's, and I don't uh, even know if any of this audio is going to be able to even be. No, probably not. Um, oh, uh oh, oh, they want a tire. Oh, yeah, something just blew up. Yeah. Oh, it's flying everywhere. Yeah, one Travel, tire. Tra yep. Travel. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, what, where else can you go to see two blocks? blow out of a uh, ATV right yeah, now. Yeah, absolutely. And there's, you know, um, we're here in the FXR booth. Yep. You know, you can find um, any any of your s sled or any of your accessories you need, you know, from uh, clothing, right? Um, they got some of the fishing stuff in yep. here as well. Um, but there's a little bit of everything, but for the most part, it's celebrating engines, most importantly, small engines, you know, your ATVs, your four wheelers, your side by sides and your sleds. Absolutely. It's an awesome event. They got great food. They got great. You can buy everything. FXR's got a few vendors around here as well selling in house. It is an absolute amazing show. Absolutely. But we'll we'll take a break from this for a second because we got all weekend. Uh, I know you're not here for that long, but we got a lot still to take in tonight. Yeah. You finished rookie of the year. We all, a few of us know that it could have even been maybe more. It happens. It does. You know, I don't, I'm sure you remember when Brandon Polinick uh, called a fish in the river and disqualified his whole weight, loses the tournament. You think his year's over. He comes back and wins the next event. Yes, sir. So just come back next year and win it. It's that, that simple. Exactly. You know, it, it's it's good motivation, and we've got that for next year. Got the flow of how things go, how the anglers are. You know, kind of a whole gist of getting this first year underneath my belt was huge for the, this up and coming year. You know, we got a lot of rule changes. Some people are up in the sky. Some people like it. You know, it's uh, it's a lot of controversy in the fishing world right now. But hopefully, we all come together at the end of the day, and uh, it is whatever. I mean, everybody loves the sport. So hopefully we can all get there at one point and uh, it's going to be a great time. Do we put the over under next year on 1.5 below or under controversial stories with Trey McKinney? Do you think they're coming at you? you Do you know, think they're coming after you? I feel like, I mean, this year I, I would say yes. You know, yeah. uh, this year was definitely, uh, I was in the crosshairs. Um, of a lot of people. Um, hopefully the, next not year. just you, the youngins. Exactly. A lot of the youngins. Absolutely. Yeah, it it kind of seemed like there was a divide a little bit. Absolutely, which was nice. Um, you know, next year I'm going to be sitting in the back and there's going to be nine more rookies. I'm going to be like, point at that guy. You know, <laughs> They're the fault. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Blame them. Exactly. Blame them. So it, it's, it's going to be as what it is, but we'll stay on our straight path. I know, you know, a lot of the stuff, basically all the accusations that has been heard this year. I took a lot of technical tests for everyone. 100% yep. pass all in the green and I knew I was, you know, that's the thing. Going into it, I was like, hey, can we give you a lie text? I'm like, come on, bring it on. Bring like, it. Yep. bring it. Like, hook me up. Fingers you know, all. you've been, you, seriously, you've been tournament fishing um, since a very young age. You and I didn't know each other, yep. but we lived in the same state, and you probably didn't hear anything about what was going on in Chicago, because Southern Illinois is like, who cares? Yes, basically. <laughs> but, but we in Chicago knew what was going on in Southern Illinois, yep. and I heard... Trey McKinney's name since I think he was 12 or 13. I mean, 
At what age did you win your first boat? I, I won my first boat, I, I want to say 15. Yeah. Um, so it, it was a great time. I think we, uh, me and Rick, you know, as team partners, um, he's been a mentor of mine. Um, he's helped me along the way, taught me a lot about life, and that's a very important thing right now, living on the road. Yep. A lot out here, and uh, you know, we we fish a lot together. We've learned a lot together. We've learned together. You know, that's a whole, that's the key of it that made it so, uh, you know, beautiful a journey for us. You know, it was kind of like we fished together, show the ropes and then we just kind of expanded both of our knowledges and learning more in the future on different bodies of water. 99% of people here aren't going to know who Rick is. I barely know who he is, but he, he was quite a bit older than you, right? Yes, sir. Yep. Um, so when you get to have a mentor that's been through the ropes, even if, if he's still learning, obviously this sport especially is something that yeah. things change every few months. I mean, you have to be continuously learning. But how big was that at the beginning to have someone who could show you kind of the ropes? Absolutely. It was huge. You know, a lot of people, there's a lot of controversy about it. Like, oh, everybody's up in arms with it. But, you know, for me, it was more or less teaching me about life, how to handle things, how to do things the right way. You know, instead of creating bad habits, he, he led me in that straight habit where once you, it's a lot easier to stay in a habit once you're in it. You know, when you kind of have a lot of different roads to take, it's easier to take the wrong one. So, you know, he taught me right from wrong. And um, so that, that was the most important thing as long as fishing, um, you know, situations, everything else like that. That was a great thing. And he's like, he said, now, he said, now you got to go learn. And I was like, I was like, you know, it's, this is a, this is the time, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's different when you have somebody to run an idea by in a boat. And when you're out there on Lake Ontario, about 50 miles from anywhere. And the waves sometimes are coming exactly. over your boat. I mean, yeah. you're, yeah, it's, you grew up real quick out there, right? Yes, sir. The Bassmaster Elite Series schedule just came out yesterday. Yep. And uh, we're coming to the Midwest twice. I'm happy about it as the Midwest yep. guy. Uh, St. Clair and the Mississippi River. We just talked about uh, the Opens and, um, what do you think it's going to take to win this Open, and what do you think the techniques that are going to play over there on the lacrosse? Absolutely. So I've only been there a few times, but I absolutely love the fishery. Yeah. Probably number one in my books as far as running dangerously, running sandbars, running places that you never should run a bass boat. And that's what I love. I love that adrenaline to it. I love getting to places that hasn't seen a bait in a long time. And I take pride in that. I love running it. I love watching the current and figuring out how to run. Uh, that's, that's a huge thing. You know, mapping can be, as you know, false on yeah. a river like that. And it um, changes so much. Exactly. You know? That's what I love about it. You're out there in the element, you read the water, you read the current seams, and you go run and you go fishing. So that's a love for it. Um, I feel like we're going to see a lot of shallow water stuff as, I mean, it's a river. Yeah. Um, fish live shallow, and they do live deep. But, you know, it's hard to say what anglers are going to perform better um, and something like that. You know, hopefully we do good there because I love it so much. Um, but, you know, you never know. It's fishing, and uh, I bet. It's got to take over 19 a day to win, I feel like. Yeah. Um, you got big smallmouth, you got big largemouth, you got both, everything, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, great fishery. A lot of fish going to get big, big caught, I'm sure. And uh, it's going to be curious to see what rises. Absolutely. Well, Trey, before we let you go, let me ask you this last question. Yeah. Did you ever think at this point in life, you would be at a uh, Minnesota snowmobiling festival with your face <laughs> as one of the main attractions right here. No, I didn't. No, you know, no, no I, I would have never thought I'd ever be able to witness something like this because yeah. we're a long way from home. I was about to say, I don't think I'd ever thought I'd be here. You no, know? exactly. It's a curveball. You know, it's a different group of people. Yeah. I love talking to them. You know, like our what I do and what they do is so different. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they're very, everybody here is respectful. Um, everybody loves fishing, loves the outdoors doors hunting as well right. big passion of mine as far as riding fast stuff you know i, I have a I have a bass guy fast boat when you talk to these guys that's not so much the trick you know these guys are running we saw the little drag cars over there 135 miles an hour 150 yards like uh it's pretty cool to see how fired up these guys are for it like this show the the entertainment the pump the drive is it's pretty special absolutely well hey trey we're gonna get out of here do you want to do me a favor yeah can you send us to commercial break we'll be right back all right we'll be right back <laughs> The National Freshwater Spearfishing Championships is taking place on beautiful Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. Compete alongside some of the nation's best. Whether you are a seasoned Spiro or new to the sport, there is a division for you. This is a one-day competition. Adults compete Friday, September 27th, and the youth competition follows on Saturday the 28th. Whether you want to just check out this heart-pounding sport or register to compete, visit nationalfreshwaterspearfishing.org.
Welcome back everyone and hey, we are here in the Minnesota United Snowmobile Association booth, uh, Minuus as we know it. And um, Scott, this is, um, this is a crazy event. It's huge. It's uh, 57th annual uh, um, Heydays here, Snow Baron Snowmobile Club Heydays event. Uh, they've been doing this for 57 years, second location. Um, and it is crazy. The number of vendors that we have here today uh, on site and a waiting list to get in, the number of swappers, a waiting list to get in, and the amount of drag racing and teams that we've got from all over the country, including Canada, racing just to the south of us here today. Um, it's amazing, truly amazing here, what we've got going on. The biggest snowmobile event in the country right here, Hades, 2024, the 57th annual. And it's, it's an awesome spot. You know, you're pretty much right on the border. You got your Minnesotians that are here, you know, the biggest representation of snowmobilers in the country. You got right across the border, Wisconsin, they've got a healthy amount of snowmobilers. But like you said, people from all over. I met someone that's here from Australia. I said, what do you know about snowmobiles? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you know, I just walked down here. We just interviewed and started off with our good friend, Trey McKinney from the Bass side of things, but he's here. He checked it out. He said, you know, he tours all over the world. He said, I've never seen something like this. Yeah, motorsports all over. It's not just snowmobiling. It's also ATVs, UTVs, um, trailers, all the accessories, clothing manufacturers, um, uh, and then maybe some of the fishing industry, obviously, I didn't know yeah. he was here, but yeah. that's great. Um, magazine publications and anything to do with outdoor recreation, but a lot of it in snow, we had the racing part of it. We've got vintage down here in memory lane, just to the left of us or whatever, when you're going back to the original parts of snowmobiling and how this all sport got started in the 60s, really peaked in the early 70s, 70, 71 and 72 where there were over a hundred manufacturers and we were manufacturing a million snowmobiles a year and selling a million snowmobiles a year. Incredible. Obviously that's not the case right now. We're down to four manufacturers. And with the announcement last year that Yamaha was going to get out of the snowmobile market, we're down to three manufacturers. Two of those manufacturers being right here in Minnesota, Articat and Polaris. Um, so you've got a good representation from Minnesota when you have two of the main manufacturers right here in the state of Minnesota. I mean, honestly, it's it's a community that me and Trey were talking about. We said, we wish the fishing or, or even the you know shooting world, anything really that we're into as much could have an event like this because I think anyone would be envious uh, if you come from any other sport. You know, I mean, it's just missing a giant football field in the middle or this would look like the commotion around the Super Bowl. I mean, literally, it's traffic for a mile or two around, parking for blocks around, and everyone's here for just a couple days, but it goes to the wall. Right, yeah, so everybody's so nice. That's the nice thing is in, you're up in the upper Midwest, and, and we are drawing from New York and, and Washington State, and we do have a lot of Canadians here. A lot of but Wyoming, every, Montana, a lot of Wyoming, everything. Montana, all west, yep. right, uh, the, the booth across the, driveway from us here or whatever, those people are out from Wyoming, Minnesota, or Wyoming, the state of Wyoming, and and uh, and they come down, but we got uh, people from Yellowstone here, yep. and uh, all over the Midwest and out West and East, all over. And the nice thing is that all these different types of people can come together and uh, just have a great time. Everybody's so friendly here and, uh, and experiencing that. And young kids, a lot of families with young kids come out to try to get those kids kind of out of the house and away from the computer and away from the cell phone and like get out and try to get a hobby that gets you outdoors. It's about getting outdoors and experiencing nature and what Minnesota and all these other states have to offer. Yeah, and it's, it's a sport unlike any other. You know, I think the most entertaining thing I've seen so far is they've got these sleds. You gotta call them a sled. You gotta call a snowmobile a sled to the right, die hard, right? Right, right, yeah. Um, they got wheels on them. They've got, they've got, um, you know, wax on the bottom, and they're ripping on on uh, grass. Right. And they're yep. flying. They're going over 100 miles an hour. They're doing freestyle tricks. I saw someone do a backflip on a sled off grass. Yeah. I mean, right. um, truly remarkable. If you're gonna take the time and drive all the way from New York 
They're gonna drive all the way from Washington State or come from Canada. They really want you to have a, a wonderful experience the whole time that you're here. Now, over all generations, like I said, young kids, young families, all the way up to adults, and some of those that have been around since the beginning of snowmobiling back in the 60s are all represented here. And um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's a great, great family event for people and, and so on to come out. And, uh, and we've been doing it for uh, 57 years now. 57, how many 57. years have you been out of 57? I have my, uh, this is my 33rd year yeah. actually coming. Good numbers. So Good yeah, numbers. started when I was 16 years old. Again, trading snowmobiles. And when you're a 16 year old, getting new equipment, upgrading equipment, and Hades was always the place to, to get it done. So more snowmobiles are sold in a Hades weekend than any other time in the state of Minnesota. So they'll sell more snowmobiles this two day weekend than any dealer, any dealer wow. combined all together will get wow. sold here wow. according to the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources. That's pretty incredible. That tracks sales of snowmobiles. Yeah. This is where yeah. they happen right here. But it makes sense. There's deals everywhere. Any model, any modification, you can pretty much find it here. And if you can't, you can do the mod because you can find the parts or accessories here somewhere. Right, you can actually put a snowmobile together by buying building it, <laughs> building it piece by piece. Yep. Doing an old Johnny Cash song, right? Uh, where he's building a car, basically digging a piece from, uh, from uh, parts and putting it together or whatever. It's like pieces and pieces put together to create a new snowmobile. You can actually do that here at Hay Days. Absolutely. So now we're in the club booth right now. Yeah. N and not, not the Snow Bears Club, you know. They're, I don't even, I, I'm sure they have a booth, but those guys are so busy this weekend, you right, know, who knows right, where they are. Right. But we're going to be joined by one, like you said. Yeah. But tell me a little bit about your guys' club. Um, you were the president for years. Yeah. Now you're the main editor for the publication. Right. So Min USA, yep, got started in 1985. Group of people got together and decided we want to get a snowmobile association together. We've already had another one and then two separate entities that were merged together to create Min USA. And I was the president, yep, about two years ago. Now I'm the past president. Um, we have uh, 185 clubs throughout the state of Minnesota. And uh, we're right pushing around that 11,000 on membership. Uh, there are 198,000 registered snowmobiles in the state of Minnesota. So we got room to grow the organization and get more members. One of your member benefit is the magazine that you get. Besides the fact that when you uh, join for $35 uh, directly to Min USA, you'll get the magazine, seven issues of Minnesota Snowmobiling Magazine. Yep. Plus we do have an accident death membership benefit of $3,000. If unfortunately your loved one passes away, we will write you a check for $3,000 um, for uh, the death benefit to help pay for funeral expenses and so on. That's automatic, doesn't cost you a dime. All you need to be is a current member of standing. Um, we have exclusive trail rides that we have with our organization through Winter Rendezvous. It's our convention that we have. Travels throughout the state of Minnesota to the best destinations for snowmobiling where the trails are groomed the best. We have live silent auctions and it's just really a fun event. We have entertainment come in. We have four quarterly meetings that we have. One's the fall workshop. The fall workshop is really an educational kind of a, a meeting that we have with all our snowmobile clubs and all our members throughout the state of Minnesota. And so if there's legislation that's coming up, we go ahead and we start talking about it and set our legislative priorities. Um, in our spring meeting, we, that's where we sit down and we set our budgets. So all the clubs get together and set their budgets for the year. Min USA sets their budgets. All our committees set their budgets at the spring meeting. And then we have a summer event. The summer event is really designed to get all the clubs together in the summertime because we've had some time off. The season's over. We're kind of in between going to hay days, in between the fall and getting the trails prepped and getting the, all the volunteers back together again to start putting about putting the trails in. Because in the state of Minnesota, there's 22,000 miles of trails and 21,000 miles of the trails are put in by volunteers. So if there weren't volunteers- There'd be no trails. There'd be no trails, yep. right. If there's no clubs, then there's no sales. So there's no dealers, there's no snowmobiles getting sold, no manufacturers, everything goes away if it isn't for the volunteers and the members of Min USA and the state of Minnesota. No, seriously. Um, Thank you. Know, you. It, it's, it's necessary because 
a lot of this stuff doesn't happen, you right. know, with without not only the participants, you know, those who snowmobile, but you have to give back to, you know, um, we talk about it a lot here with the fishing side of things, you know, um, part of buying that fishing license, you know, get money towards stocking, you know, giving back to the next generation we talk a lot about because again, if, if they don't keep snowmobiling, again, it goes right. away. Right, right, so that registration to register your snowmobile in the state of Minnesota is $113. And out of that $113, we get about 45% of that. Um, and then that goes to help uh, make sure that the trails are groomed properly, helps for signage, helps to keep clubs going. The other percent goes to the DNR, which also helps us to get the trails put together, do the, the legislative things and the federal and state government things that need to get done, permitting and so on, so we can get trails put together. But if it wasn't for the volunteers, 21,000 miles, out of 22,000 miles of trails, wouldn't get put in every year. So again, without those volunteers, uh, it just wouldn't work. So we pay the fee to have a sticker on your snowmobile, and a lot of that money does come back, not 50%, but pretty close to it, comes back to the clubs that we can go back and, and uh, help pay for a lot of the things to get the trails put in. And again, without the trails, where are you gonna go riding? You're not gonna be going riding anywhere. So you have to have a trail system Yep. And we do have an interactive trail system that goes from the southern part of the state of Minnesota all the way to the Canadian border. So if you want to start in Iowa, Snowville, all the way through the state of Minnesota and get to Canada, you can do you can that. Do yeah. Wow. wow. So it's called the corridor, DNR corridor system. And those signs are little orange signs with the state of Minnesota. And it'll have a corridor number on it. And so that will be also on a map. And so we have trail maps, but we're kind of in today's technology going away from the old paper map, okay? Yep, yep. And and we're going to Ride Command, mm -hmm. and we're going to Garmin. Sure. And so all of our trails in the state of Minnesota have been GPS. That information goes to the DNR, and then the Ride Commands, the Garmins, and those app-based yeah. technologies then grab that information, and you can either put it on your phone, or in the case of Ride Command, you can put it on your seven inch uh, display on your snowmobile. So as you're driving down a snowmobile, you can glance down at the map that you're driving on. And you okay. got your GPS. And you got a GPS. Here's another thing. You can pair with your buddy's cell phone and he shows up as a dot So you know where your, your friend's at at all times. Yep, so on Ride Safety Command. Safety first. Yep, safety first is really important, but on Ride Command, you can add up to eight other riders um, by pairing their cell phones to Ride Command. So right as I got Ride Command in the front, I just hit add, and then I can put in Jim's cell phone number, and then I'll hit pair, and all of a sudden Jim will show up as a dot after it goes up to the satellite and comes back to my snowmobile. And I can add Chuck, and I can add Jim, and I can add Roger, and I can add up to eight, seven other people besides myself, a total eight. So as we're snowmobiling, I can glance down and say, yep, everybody's following me, nobody's following behind. So yeah, eliminates all that guesswork. Where the heck are we? Yeah. Also, yeah. is everybody here? Sure. You know, who got lost, who broke down? So it's safety and it's just convenience and ease of operation. Yeah, and especially, you know, last year, we didn't talk about it as much because the ice wasn't as strong, but those kind of apps are super important out in the mountains, you know, I think that's where they're used the most, but, you know, just because it's more open around here, you don't have mountains, we still have lakes, God forbid, you know, you got thin ice, someone goes through, I mean, it's all life-saving technology. Right, right, yep. Um, before we let you go, you got one thing that the clubs got this year that I thought was a pretty cool deal. Yep, so we're selling calendars uh, for 20 bucks, and uh, there's a winner every day that gets drawn and over $20,000 in prizes that were given back. Um, and it helps support us, obviously, helps support the trails, helps support MinUSA. Buy a calendar for 20 bucks, chances to win $20,000 total, but every day somebody's gonna be a winner. Let's go, it doesn't sound much better than that. Scott, before we let you go here, what was, um, what was I wanna hear your favorite thing you saw at Hay Days this year? and your favorite course that maybe someone who hasn't rode in Minnesota wants to come out and uh, check out. Maybe not give your favorite one close to home. You don't want it too busy. Sure, right, you know, yeah, but... I don't want people in my backyard if I don't have to. Right, so right. uh, the coolest thing that I saw 
uh, at Hades so far this year was a snowmobile that went down the grass drakes tracks yesterday at 195 miles an hour. 195. Yeah, almost blinked and he was at the end already. So wow. we've got some major horsepower out there right now. The track was very slick yesterday, very fast track. We're gonna see more of that today. I thought that was very cool. And the second most important, if I could have a second most important thing, was going down to see Memory Lane. Yeah. So Memory Lane takes you back in time to the beginning of snowmobiling and they built a brand new permanent structure this year. So if you're ever gonna go see Memory Lane, this is the year to check out Memory Lane. They're right down uh, on the north end of the event and a brand new cement, uh, cemented uh, pole building. And, um, and uh, favorite place to go riding is in McGregor. Got a cabin on uh, Lake Minnewawa. I love the McGregor area and snow building around there. Sioux Line, working my way through the Savannah State uh, Forest. And um, so yeah, that's my favorite hot for, uh, my favorite uh, honey hole, as you say, for snowmobiling in the McGregor area. All right, everyone. Well, hey, Scott, I want to thank you. Thanks for making uh, this weekend so amazing. And uh, we're going to swap you out real quick yep. and have Keith sit down, all right? Thanks, Jim. Really appreciate it and everything you do with Midwest Outdoor Magazine. No problem. Midwest Outdoors Magazine helps you enjoy the outdoors, giving you the best information on where to go, what to use, and how to use it. With fishing maps marked by the pros, nature notes, in-depth interviews, and much, much more. Your subscription gets you 10 big issues of the best in fishing, hunting, and the great outdoors. Plus, Midwest Outdoors Digital Edition gives you dozens of extra articles. Sign up now at MWOMag.com. That's MWOMag.com. And we're back and we have Keith, um, Keith, president, founder, not founder probably, it's been going on for how many years, 50? Uh, 1967 was our first race. That was Midwest Outdoors first year Hot as well. Diggity. Yeah, Great things know, happened in 67. Up, I tell you, it's a party in 67. Right Absolutely. Wasn't there for it, but we can right. imagine. <laughs> right. Um, heydays, I keep saying it, I'm gonna sound like a broken record here, but right. holy cow. Right. Um, never been here before. Really? And it is fascinating. Well, welcome. First of all, welcome. Appreciate we it. We love Appreciate having you it. here. I love being here. Right on. And, and so do we yeah. as volunteers. Yeah, you know, have to. The Barons, uh, I sit on the board. Yep. Uh, and then I'm, I'm also on the steering committee. Yep. And so we've got 152 members right now. Um, and this is what we do. Yeah. You know, we don't get to take care of trails. Mm -hmm. um, we do have a grant program yep. for those clubs that do take care of the trails but this is what we get to do. Yeah, and you have everything here, you know, just and about. Just, just about, right? right. Um, even, even some things you wouldn't expect to see, but if you are a small engine lover, right. There, right. there is pretty much guaranteed to be something for you here, whether it's on the main grounds or over in the swap. Absolutely. I saw anything that has an engine that runs, two stroke, four stroke, you name it, it runs, it's out there. And some homemade engineered stuff too. Some, some Frankensteins for right sure on. out there. I saw a grocery cart yesterday that had an electric motor on it. Saw a few of those, actually. Right on. <laughs> Absolutely. So there's some ingenuity out there, which the snowmobile industry has seen for a long time. Yes. Yes, it has. Right. Scott told me a story about once upon a time, uh, soap getting ejected onto the skid pads. Absolutely. Yep. You know? For the straight line guys. Exactly. Yep. Soap slippery. Hey, it and it works. It right? works there, too. <laughs> But yeah, there's um, always things changing. It's one of the one of my favorite things that I got to see is the the evolution of, of the sleds. You know, right. seeing ones from the '80s to the '90s and right. so on. You know, absolutely. And I mean, we've got everything there here as well from the yeah. antique guys over there with uh, Dave Gunther and, and his crew of people. Um, we've got Memory Lane on the other end. They just put yep. up a new building this year. We were just talking about it. That was quite an investment by them. Yep. Um, we're happy to have them all here. And then we've got all the way to all the mountain sleds, the trail sleds, yep, yep. the new stuff coming on the market right next door here. Um, some of the drag sleds are up over a thousand horsepower now. And they're running parachutes. It's insane. So you got it all. It's insane. Right. 
Absolutely. So we were overworking uh, premium experience yesterday. Yes. And and we've got a lot of newcomers, first timers, the heydays that buy premium experience tickets. And they said, yeah, it's everything that we thought it was. And to back to your point about the sleds, the antiques ran right after opening ceremonies yesterday. And so they go, cool. you guys got those too? And I said, we got it all. Got it That's all. what we do here. That premium experience, you know, I feel like I got a premium experience just being here. Right. But there's a way to notch it up a little bit. Absolutely. What's, got, what's that? We've got um, different premium experience. Uh, I'm trying to think of where to start because it's that cool. Yeah, it's that, it's we, got a, it's robust. Right. Absolutely. We've got um, there's an area right at the finish line. Okay. That's our premium experience kind of tent and lobby. Okay. Um, meals are included. We have them all catered in. Uh, they're, they're frying food right next to the tent. Awesome. We've got donuts and coffee over there to start with. Um, and, and you can get whatever level you want from, hey, we want to come in. We want the viewing areas, the premium viewing areas, like at MUD, yep. at Expo, yep. and at the finish line. Yep. Um, with a nice seating area down there. A um, few drinks involved. A few drinks. You know, um, there's a bar right next door, so we got the pop right there. I mean, it's... We try to make it a turnkey operation. In fact, we've got some folks starting here and just they'll be here in just a little bit, I heard. We'll I, take them around yep. and we will um, give them the full, the full experience. Yeah. You know, the ride, the golf cart, we'll get them behind the scenes. I'll get them up in the tilt and Hilton, up in the announcing booth. We'll get them over by the starting line. I'll get them through the mud pits. Um, the, the mud. The mud. That, is a hoot in and of itself. It's wild. Absolutely. It's wild. The great Southern Drag Series come. Those boys came from Georgia. Really? To come hang with us. And those machines in and of themselves are amazing. They've got yeah. uh, machines there, well over $100,000 in the machine. Wow. Right. Wow. To get them dirty. A lot of money here. And it seems like people don't go mind going through it. You know, I've seen tires blowing up on the course. Right. I've seen bikes ditched and thrown off right. ramps. Right I not. mean, people are doing it for the love of the sport. And you know, even our freestyle guys over in my, my favorite part so far. Yeah, in the that Expo area. Yep. You know, Joe Duncan and, and brings in a great show over there. They do a fabulous job. Uh, those are all X Game athletes. Yeah. That are coming in. Yeah. And many of them are coming. Our friends from Canada. I don't know how much one of those big sleds weigh, but seeing them do a backflip with it and th throw their body around and land it, I mean, it's it's impressive because gravity is a law, not a suggestion. <laughs> It's guaranteed to be there. Absolutely, huh? every time. Absolutely, every yeah. time. So, one one thing to say to anyone who hasn't been here before, you can go on and on of what they can see, you know. Right. But why? Why should someone come next year? Um, right. Obviously, I think they'll see this. They'll see the images. They'll see the shots. Right. They'll want to come. Right. But if you could say one reason why you need to be here, why the, should we be here? I think I hope that the Snow Baron's passion for this event shows through. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a pretty hardcore group of us. Absolutely. You know, we, we, we do this with a club of 150 members and we've got about uh, 20 other organizations that come in and help, help us out. out with this thing. Yep. And we've got about 420 volunteers, wow. 425. Wow. You know, aside from the club members. Yeah. And so it's the biggest power, or it's the biggest snowmobile show in the world. Yep. It's a yep. premier power sport show without a doubt. Yep. And if you want to see it, it's going to be here. So I think the question is, why not come? Why not come? And it's true. And I want to thank the Snow Barons for putting this on. Well, thanks I for coming. I want to thank Hay Days. It's amazing. Thank you. And um, the, the day is just getting underway, so we got to get out, both of us, and uh, explore one more day before it's over. But we'll be waiting for next year. So everyone, if you want to check this out, check out the website. Where do they go to check it out? I would say heydays.com, and then we've got a Hay Days app as well. Yep. So and by all means, get that app. And I'm sure there's plenty on social media. Check out everything that's going on right here, on. guys. And... Um, until next time, I'm Jim O'Neill. Keith Twombly, thanks for, uh, thanks for having me and make someone smile today. Absolutely. So this is our coverage from Hay Days, guys, and we'll take it to a commercial break, but we'll be right back from the water. Midwest Outdoors Magazine helps you enjoy the outdoors, giving you the best information on where to go, what to use, and how to use it. With fishing maps marked by the pros, nature notes, in-depth interviews, and much, much more. Your subscription gets you 10 big issues of the best in fishing, hunting, and the great outdoors. Plus, Midwest Outdoors Digital Edition gives you dozens of extra articles. Sign up now at MWOMag.com. That's MWOMag.com.
Welcome back everyone. Hey, we are physically in the water here to break down the Sea-Doo Fish Pro Apex. This is the vehicle I've been riding all week. You know, this is a personal watercraft, a PWC for short. And this one's different than any other you've ever seen. Um, yes, it has the same beast under the hood as a lot. This has a 300 horsepower. It goes zero to 60 in under four seconds. Talk about getting to your fishing spot before anyone else. This is going to help that happen. Um, it has tons of room. You know, if you're vertical jigging, you can easily fit two people on here. If you're casting, I do recommend one just because of the limited space, but you can fish off this thing super well. Not only does it only sit in about five, six inches of water, uh, maybe even less, you can get this thing behind docks, around trees. You can fish points. Um, it's super good on waves. It takes waves well, rides on top of them. So it's even okay for big water, just be careful. Um, but I've been super impressed with this thing. Uh, the stability of it is amazing. See if I wanna climb onto this thing right on the gunnel. I can I hold on to it. I can stand here, I can fish. You know, you got your rod holders down here. I just grab that and you have your rod holder. Now, this seat just moved a little bit because I already disengaged it because I have to show you guys one of the absolute coolest thing about this. So the back seat pulls off, all right? And it comes with three, two other pieces that are inside of the ski -Doo. Gets this pole, okay? This pole snaps in, an alarm clicks on, that's gonna keep the vehicle under six miles per hour on the water, okay? Because this is your pedestal seat. They want safety first, of course. So get your back seats already on there. Goes everywhere with you. Snap that on like that. This is kept in the big storage in front where you keep all your tackle. Snap that in, boom. Now you have a 360 degree rotating fishing chair. Again, easy to use this thing. You fall in the water, you get out of the water to get your bait off a dock, doesn't matter. You get right back on, grab your rod, super easy. Grab it, flip it out. Can't beat it, right? Um, but that's just a few of the awesome things about the Fish Pro. Um, all the rod holders over here, I have 10 loaded up on this right now. Um, plenty of storage for your rods and your tackle. Then we'll come out again, show you this, this clip over here. So you can take these clips off. You grab this rod holder, snap it in right here, boom, right next to the cup holder. And you get your rod in. I mean, how nice is that? Let's say you're trolling. You never have to give up on your troll. You can continue your path right here. Grab your rod, start reeling. Just like that, super comfortable. You wanna get up and cast, you're up. Take your bait off. You're pitching and flipping within seconds. Now you'll see, we'll come over here and open this live well for you. Again, it has holders for more rod holders if you wanna troll off the back. It's got a measuring tape on the top here and it's got these nice latches so that everything stays closed, especially when you have your tournament winning fish in here. As you guys can see, there's plenty of room to keep some fish in here. Um, we decided we wanted to show you guys a little dock pet that we found this morning, um, but plenty of room. You know, you can keep truly about um, three five pound fish in here. We did fit a five pound largemouth in here and a 24 inch pike. So it's got room in it. Nice thing is, is it has a glove box right here. Keep your tackle, your phone in there, keep it all dry, stay there. And then we have the large compartment that comes up. Plenty of room for your bags or storage. Bananas, they're not bad luck on the sea dew you know. Plenty of room in here to put everything. Awesome vehicle. And don't forget, you have your big speakers. You can bump the music all day long. The sea -Doo Fish Pro Apex was a watercraft unlike any other. Not only was it super fun and added to the enjoyment of the fishing experience, but it was super efficient with how shallow of water it could get into, how fast it could get from spot to spot, and how everything is at an arm's reach. So if you guys wanna get your hands on one of these or check out the Fish Pro Apex or any of the other Fish Pro lineup, make sure to check out the website listed below. 
Well, everyone, hey, look, it, we made it back to the studio. Last week was one heck of a week. We started at a heydays. I hope you guys enjoyed that. A little different than our normal show, but just the love of the outdoors and doing outdoor recreation was awesome to see, um, especially seeing a snowmobile go 166 miles an hour and breaking the world record on grass. I didn't even know snowmobiles drove on grass, but quite entertaining. Um, the Sea Dew event was amazing. Want to thank everyone up there that made that happen. Tim, James, everyone, you guys were awesome. Um, also, shout out to some of the uh, Airbnbs, you know, that impromptu were made by the Winkelmans and uh, Reed and Kurt. Thank you, everyone, for making the whole week go flawlessly. I know it wasn't a normal show, guys, but I want to throw it in there real quick. Your tournament recap and fishing news recap for the week. Barrett Chaquette of Headland, Alabama High School Fishing Team won the Bassmaster Combine Series. I know we covered that. One of our own Illinois boys won that last year, so I wanted to give a shout out there. And Cody Stahl took home the second to last Bassmaster Open of the Year. And it was a big one because it was right here in the Midwest on the Mississippi River. And it was a nice change of pace to not see all the guys staring down at their graphs. They were chucking and whining chatter baits, spinner baits, swim jigs, and frogs. And that's what Cody caught his fish on, was frogs and spinner baits. So it was good to see an old fashioned slug fest in the weeds. That is the end of the show this week, guys. I wanna thank you as always for tuning in. I wanna thank our title sponsor, Fish Daddy. If you guys haven't geared up yet for the fall season, it's right around the corner. Soon we'll be switching our short sleeves to long sleeves. So go stock up for all your fall bites at fishdaddyoutdoors.com. If you haven't yet, make sure to like and subscribe. And if you're listening to us, go watch us over at on YouTube. And if you're watching us on YouTube, know that you can always take us on the go and listen to the audio podcast. As always, guys, I'm Jim O'Neill, Tight Lines, and until next time, we'll see you on the water.